It's Friday, February 25th, 2011, and you're watching This Week in Linux News. Okay, we had several distro releases this week. Let's go ahead and get started with those. Wary Puppy 5.1 released this week. If you're not familiar with Wary, it is a version of Puppy Linux designed for older computers. Jolly Cloud had a minor update to version 1.1.1, and now they say that it will work with computers that are up to 10 years old, so it's working with a lot older graphical hardware now. Linux Mint 10 KDE's final version has released. In addition to that, they announced the name of the upcoming version of Linux Mint, Linux Mint 11, is going to be called Katya. According to the Linux Mint site, the name Katya is a Russian name with Greek origins meaning pure. And even though they're not Linux releases, PCBSD and FreeBSD both had 8.2 version releases. All right, and moving away from distribution releases and onto software releases, WordPress version 3.1 officially released this week. I went ahead and upgraded the thisweekinlinux.com site to use it, and there have been some changes that I'm really enjoying. They've added the bar across the top where you can do a lot of the management functionality without having to go into the admin interface to do it. In a way, it's a lot like Drupal 7's new administration bar across the top as well. And according to the WordPress site, they say that WordPress is more of a CMS than ever, so they're definitely moving away from the traditional blog-style interface and more toward a CMS where you can just manage whatever content you want. Different post types, pages, posts, blog posts, whatever you want to do. In other release news, this week Gnome 3's Beta 1 became officially available. This update comes with a few changes. Specifically, they changed the way that workspaces are handled. They're now dynamically done, and it's all on the right-hand side of the screen. For more information on it, if you want to read more about it, or even check out the live CD that they've made available, I have a link to the source code below to the Pharonix website. Additionally, however, they've made available the rest of the GNOME 3 release schedule. It says that on March 9th, Beta 2 is going to be available. On March 23rd, the release candidate will be available, and on April 6th, GNOME 3 will go final. So I can't wait to give it a shot and see how it works out for me. Let me know what you think about the GNOME 3 changes in the comment section below. Okay, let's move on to some Ubuntu news because there was a decent amount of it this week. VirtualBox 4.0.4 released this week, and one of the key features that they're touting about it is the ability to handle Ubuntu 11.04 guest operating systems. I have to say, I'm looking forward to trying out the Ubuntu alphas and the upcoming beta and all that stuff in the new version of VirtualBox. If you've tried it already, let me know how it worked out for you down below. And speaking of trying Ubuntu 11.04 out in a virtual box, I might have to do that again very, very soon. Apparently, there is an update that's been pushed out to Edge Ubuntu 11.04, the educational-based version of Ubuntu, that allows you to do package selection in the default installation. This is something I've been looking for in an Ubuntu-based distribution for a very long time, so hopefully that sort of thing will get pushed upstream to Ubuntu so that when you're doing the installation, you can tell it exactly what you want, exactly what you don't want. Now, in a bit of exciting news, this week Canonical's Bryce Harrington has announced that he's uploaded a snapshot of Wayland into the Ubuntu 11.04 repositories. Now, keep in mind, this is the first time Wayland has been in an official Ubuntu repository. The version that's been put out there is definitely months and months out of date, and it will only work with open source drivers at this point, so it's really only intended for experimental testing type uses. But it's definitely nice to see this plan by Canonical taking steps forward and working toward their goals. Now speaking of Canonical working toward their goals, in last week's news video we talked briefly about the ultimatum sort of given by Canonical to the Banshee developers saying, we can either disable your Amazon Store plugin or you can give us 75% of the proceeds. There has been a bit of a resolution to that since then. There have been some changes, some updates to the situation. Now, the resolution that Canonical and the Banshee developers came to is that both plugins will be made available, the Ubuntu One Music Store and the Amazon MP3 Store. 25% of the proceeds from the Amazon store will go to the GNOME Foundation, whereas 100% was going to them before. But now, 25% of the proceeds from the Ubuntu One Music Store plugin in both Banshee and Rhythmbox will be going to the GNOME Foundation as well. So it's sort of pulling a little bit away from the GNOME Foundation, but giving them a little bit more in a different direction. I'm still sort of of mixed opinion about this. From the comments on last week's video, I can tell that there are a lot of you that are really against the idea of Canonical trying to pull money from Gnome's hands, but there are a lot of people that are for the idea, so I don't know. Let me know what you think about it again in the comment section below. And now let's end things with some Android-related news. This week, Android 3.0's SDK was made available to developers. And from what I've read, there's apparently a way to make it run in a phone mode or a phone resolution, and it works slightly differently if you do it that way. 
I'll try to find the link to that and leave it in the source code below as well. I was introduced to an Android app this week, though, that I thought was kind of interesting, and I thought I'd like to share it with you. It's called the GoTo Lock Screen Replacement. And basically, you see here when I have my phone locked, I've got this new little lock screen where I can slide my finger across and go to different sections. I've got the messages window, I've got the phone call log, I've got the Gmail that I can open, or I can just unlock the phone. In addition, up here at the top, you can see the weather, the time, you can set it to vibrate or not, get more information. It's basically a very interesting lock screen replacement for the traditional dull, lifeless lock screen that I had before. If you are interested in trying it out, it's $1.50 in the Android marketplace right now, on sale down from $3. AT&T posted on their Facebook fan page this week that a couple of their Android-based devices would be receiving updates to Froyo this week. Those two devices they mentioned specifically are the Samsung Captivate and the HTC Aria. So if you have either of those devices and you haven't already rooted them or replaced the ROM or anything like that, you might be on the lookout to see if you've received this latest update yet or not. And finally, let's wrap things up with the Motorola Zoom, the Honeycomb Android 3.0 flagship device. Now, it was announced this week when the Motorola Zoom releases, and it just happened to release this week, that it would not come with Flash 10.1 or 10.2 pre-installed. However, in a blog post from Adobe, they say that within a few weeks that all of these devices should start receiving the 10.2 update, but it's very interesting to me to see them release this product without these things available. For one, it doesn't have 4G out of the box. That's an upgrade you're gonna have to send it away to get, and it doesn't come with Flash Player out of the box, and it might not have it for a few weeks. Is it just me, or does it feel like they kinda rushed to get this product to the market? Anyway, like I said just a minute ago, they have released the Motorola Zoom this week. Verizon has it available for $5.99 on a two-year contract. I believe Best Buy has it for $7.99. And there was a bit of a mix-up, a mishap, that there was a coupon code for the direct Motorola store where you could buy it for $7.99, but the coupon took 25% off. So a lot of people ended up getting them for $5.99 with no contract. The coupon has, of course, been fixed already, or else I would probably be buying one myself right now. And the last thing to mention, even though the Zoom released just a couple of days ago, someone has already rooted it, they've already taken it apart and stripped it down to its bare components so that everybody can see exactly what's inside of it. I'll have links to all of those things in the source code below. But that's all I've got to talk about today. I'm going to be going to Indiana Linux Fest in a few weeks. It's at the end of March, March 25th through the 27th. So if you're going to be in the Indiana area, you might be interested in coming and hanging out. It's in Indianapolis. I'm going to be doing my intro to Caden Live presentation there again. So if you're interested or you want to know more about it, go ahead and head over to indianalinux.org. But that's all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.